Greetings, citizens of Nerdtropolis. Sean Todd here, the mayor of Nerdtropolis, and on this episode of Real Insights, my guest is RJ Collins, the director of Crescent City. RJ, it's great to finally meet you, man. Nice to meet you. Your movie, uh, Crescent City, had me covering my eyes at times with such a, a strong R rating. I felt like I needed an adult in the room watching with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. I think. <laughs> I'm still five uh, years old inside. So, but uh, yeah, it's definitely a well put R rated movie that people are going to be enjoying for sure. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, it was, uh, it, I was uh, kind of motivated off a lot of the 90s thrillers that I grew up watching as a kid as well. Um, and it, they're disturbing, but you just can't stop watching. And uh, we pulled a lot of truth from a lot of different serial killers out there and kind of combined that into this story, which uh, makes it compelling. Yeah. And man, wh why are mannequins so creepy? I've always been creeped out with mannequins. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, my mom would take me to the store. I used to look at mannequins. They used to freak me out. And so when I found out the serial killer was placing mannequins all through his, like this room, and he was bringing his victims there. I'm like, we have to use this in the story. <laughs> so that was a lot of the motivation from that. Um, and, you know, uh, for me personally, I just look at things and how they affect me. Um, and I try to use that as part of our storytelling. No, I love that. That's a great aspect of the film. Uh, do you have any favorite films about serial killers that you that have always stood out to you? Yeah, I don't want to sound like a, a weirdo that loves these really dark, crazy films. But I mean, look, Seven... Uh, you know, along came, along came, uh, I'm sorry, Kiss the Girls, The Bone Collector. Um, those were phenomenal. The Sixth Sense, um, uh, you know, Zodiac was, I mean, I, I thought Zodiac was phenomenal by David Fincher. Um, those are, those are a lot of the thrillers I really loved. I mean, anything with, with Morgan Freeman in it. <laughs> right. That's the weird thing. I was going to say that seven's my favorite and everything else. I think the other one you were trying to say was along came a spider, which, That's what I, was, yeah, which, which spider. I knew you were about to say along came Polly, which is that Ben Stiller movie. That was all oh, the tip of my was. tongue. <laughs> but, but yeah, I have a, a Rob Cobb comedy <laughs> side to me too. Okay. So I go no, dark and I can go light. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, all those Morgan Freeman movies, that was, that was a wild time in the nineties. Um, Cause they were all really great. Seven is probably one of my all-time favorites. I still have it on VHS. And I remember back in the day, you know, brought my friends over. So you never seen Seven? Here you go. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah, here. What's in the box? <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. And so I can see definitely you're influenced by all that stuff from the 90s, which is amazing. And we don't get many of those types of films anymore. So this is why I really enjoyed it because it's been a while since I've seen anything like this in this genre. But this movie is also packed with an incredible cast. I couldn't believe it. With Terrence Howard, who I'm a big fan of. I love everything that he pops up in. Uh, yeah. Eastside Morales, like he is a cop to me, you know, when I see him and things, and obviously he takes the villainous route in his other films, Mission Impossible. I mean, wild stuff. He's my, um, he's my, uh, DC guy right there yeah. <laughs> as dead stroke. I love it. Nikki Whalen and Alec Baldwin. I mean, just this wild cast right there. What was it like directing such a diverse ensemble, um, that really brings something different. I mean, everyone's so diverse in, in what they bring to this movie. Yeah, it, it was, I mean, it was phenomenal like casting's everything i mean it's from this first is the script and then you, you know casting will it will make or break the film and we got very lucky at the sag strike happening that we had these actors available at the same time even though it was a crunch schedule because uh, we had to get the sag waiver which took a time but once we got it we had two and a half weeks to prep the film and then shoot so it was a rush prep but we made it happen um i was so lucky terrence howard was he rocked it i mean he was he's so phenomenal he brought so much he's such a high iq and Isai Morales is just a beast. He's just phenomenal. And he's got great um, uh, instinct, right? So, and then T Nikki Whelan comes in and brings her own take to this character, which was phenomenal. So it's a strong, powerful woman that's torn with her own demons. And each character actually has their own demons in the entire film that we fight. And then you have Alec Baldwin playing Captain Howe. He's the man. He's the El Jefe. He's the guy that, you know, has run this. He's seen it all. He's trying to retire and he's dealing with, his guys that he's trusted are now into uh, a, a pretty hard case. And uh, the, the entire city is ravaged by this. And the, the tension just builds and builds and builds. We see many curveballs to the film of who the serial killer is. And then in the end, you get your answer, of course. But that's where it's the 90s for us, right? We kind of throw back to that. But it's a lot of True Detective. It's a lot of Zodiac. It's a lot of these movies kind of influenced from, from that. 
Yeah, a lot of guessing games. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if it was going to be straightforward. It's good. what type of roller coaster ride. It's like someone blindfolded me and put me on a ride. I didn't know if there was loops and stuff like that and everything, but that definitely delivered here. Uh, well, yeah, with everyone being a suspect, what is the trick to keeping the audience guessing without giving uh, too much away too soon? Well, truthfully, the writer who wrote it even didn't know who's going to pick until the end. And that helped. It really did. And it was, it was really smart. So the performances, like I said, with the actors, I mean, they were so phenomenal that it really helped just kind of, we wanted you to think it, we purposely tried to make you feel like it was one person closer to the opening. And then we just kind of kept turning it, turning it and turning it, turning it till the end. So um, the actors portrayed it perfectly. Um, and I hope, you know, with the, even the score and the music and the color and everything else, I feel like this movie, it's a great look, really fun. And uh, all the actors did their job. So we're, we're very pleased. Yeah, plenty of turns for sure. Uh, serial killer thrillers like this one, you know, have a signature style. How did you approach the visual and narrative style of Chris, uh, Crescent City to make it stand out to the genre? Like I said, the, you know, it's in a now a, a group of amazing films. Yeah, so we wanted that real kind of raw, nitty gritty um, Southern town feel to it, right? That Just kind of that true detective uh, Zodiac way. And that's all by the coloring of the film. The, the lenses we used were anamorphics, uh, you know, the DP, the color, the lighting. We just made it real grainy, nitty and gritty and real. And every, even the stunts and everything else are very practical. Uh, that's how I, I'm, I very, I, I'm the approach of making it very real and practical. Um, so that's why uh, movies like uh, Bone Collector, you know, I feel like they did exactly the same thing. And that's where influenced a lot by this movie. No, I love that. I, hear, I love hearing about all those influences. Now I have to go back and revisit all those now because I feel like this film really uh, made me enjoy, re re reminds me of all those films I enjoyed, right? Because it's been a while since I've seen all those classic thrillers and stuff like that. And so this film really reminds you of like, this genre is still around and it's still alive. And so that's why I'm glad that you made this film. Uh, if you could describe this movie in just three words, what would it be? <laughs> three words. <laughs> Riveting, suspenseful, and central. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Lastly, I need to know what is next for you? Cause I'm super excited after seeing this film. I have a really great uh, movie called Mermaid. That's got nothing to the actual mermaid, but it's a no country for old men, man on fire movie. Uh, we're in the middle of casting it. It's about a father living off grid with his daughter. And no matter how much he tries to protect her from the world, the world comes in, comes in anyways. And it's a phenomenal story. It's very dark. Uh, it's definitely the man on fire part in the end where he basically takes out an entire, I, I got to keep it a secret for now, but it's it's phenomenal. So that one's great. And then I have a big action comedy I love. I'm also producing a quite, I got a big rom-com I'm doing for the Philippines coming up for an early next year, which is phenomenal. So we're very busy right now. We're lucky. I'll I love yeah. to hear that. We definitely have to catch up. All those movies you just mentioned that kind of influenced it. I'm like in, like you sold me on everything Thank so you. far. <laughs> so I'm really excited to what you deliver uh, next, RJ. This was an extreme pleasure. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Once again, this is Sean Taj, the mayor of Metropolis, and stay tuned for more movie news, reviews, interviews, and trailers.